Hello ladies and gents, welcome to the new point of view review. In front of us is the new Dacia Duster journey package, new khaki green color and new redesigned front logo. So this is a facelift kind of uh, with the new headlights but also with the new logo. Um, this is powered uh, by a 1.5 liter uh, diesel engine. It's a four cylinder, 115 horsepower linked to six speed manual and uh, four by four or all wheel drive. Uh, to show you the headlights with the remote, you can see cold LED headlights, uh, long beam is warm lights, same as fog lights. Now, if you come closer to the car, it's gonna automatically unlock, especially if you come closer to the handle. It's a keyless entry, so if you back up, it's going to lock and give you a sound confirmation that it's locked. We're sitting on 17 inch alloys, quite comfortable. Also, we're on winter tires. On the back you have drum brakes and these look better you can also spec 16 inch steel wheels now let me unlock it for you so you can see the led taillights on the facelift and you can see also the new dacia signature now in white cargo space is practical 411 liters 1444 if you knock down the seats the light is okay in person but uh you can always replace it with a brighter LED. Um, on the camera, it might look a little bit less bright. So I'm gonna keep the key in my pocket here. Now, this is an, you know, uh, budget SUV, but it's very well packed. It's a little bit cold outside. Now you agree there with the little Dutch of sound there. I'm gonna turn on the heated seats because the journey package has that, at least here in Croatia. And the heated seats kind of work fast. <clears throat> Now, let me start the engine. That's cool with the needles. You can see also blind spots. Let me release the handbrake. I'm gonna be on automatic mode for the... You can switch to front wheel drive or rear wheel drive. Oh, excuse me, um, all wheel drive or four wheel drive. Now, um, we have a nice infotainment here. Let me just turn on the lights. So very, you know, uh, okay interior, classic, nice physical dials physical buttons on the steering wheel unfortunately no heated steering wheel that would be cool and you have the new Dacia signature there <clears throat> now I didn't bring my USB cable but you can use it to uh, turn on the Apple uh, CarPlay or Android Auto <clears throat> but the camera wouldn't pick it up good so I, I'm gonna be using the embedded navigation <clears throat> excuse me and something I forgot to show you in the Oh, let me just see here if I switch this off you can see it better uh, in my review you can see like here the height and the tilt of the car it's like just, you know for the off-road package so as I mentioned the heated seats are quite fast so I'm gonna switch them off let me just show you some music basic speakers but they work pretty good I can't play really feel too long but you know I have to mute it not to get a copyright strike so yeah um, I'm gonna keep it on navigation I have to agree to this every time you turn it on uh, navigation is kind of basic but uh, again you have the Apple CarPlay and you can uh, you know use uh, Waze Google Maps and so on and I don't think I've forgotten anything else let's just start driving Now I immediately, um, you're gonna see now that uh, eight pillar is sort of an issue. Now there's a stop sign here, so if I stop uh, and I come a little bit closer, you can see that the eight pillar would be blocking my sight. Also for the pedestrians coming from the side, it is, uh, you know, a little bit unfortunate. Now, let's start talking about the diesel engine because there's a lot to talk so 115 horsepower seems a little bit underpowered don't be like that person he didn't turn uh, his main headlights on he's driving with his daytime running lights so always keep your lights on automatic yeah common issue these days now uh, back at the engine so 115 horsepower you know on paper it seems like it's enough for this light SUV 
but I would say it's a little bit underpowered. And <clears throat> there is no stronger uh, diesel engine due to the new regulations, so they have to have a low CO2 emission. But you do have a 150 horsepower petrol engine with an automatic, and I would uh, definitely advise you to go for that. It's a 1.3 liter. This is a 1.5 liter diesel, and it's a little bit underpowered on the highway and when you need to start fast. So, I don't know, it doesn't feel like a diesel engine. It just it feels it doesn't feel like it has enough torque and it honestly sounds <clears throat> uh, or feels almost like a petrol engine. It's not that loud and it's also kind of, you know, lacking momentum. Uh, it's just I need to put it to push it to high uh, revs in order to you know make it go a little bit faster so I don't know it just feels a little bit numb at start <clears throat> and on the highway when you reach 130 when you want to accelerate it just takes time you know you have to put it to lower gear you know to catch some speed so it, it's a little bit uh, you know lacking in horsepower you know, there's some uh, police stops here so the police is having a um, tonight like a uh, you know speed monitoring checkups and so on now um, also six-speed manual also on paper it seems great but uh, due to this new thing with you know lowering fuel consumption and so on they've you know kind of um, shorten the gears so when I first sat in this car now have in mind I'm driving automatics for a longer period and <clears throat> also most of the test cars today are automatics but I occasionally drive a manual transmission and this didn't feel right at first because of the short gears so let me explain uh, I hope I won't confuse you with this but I need to explain this so for the first two gears uh, feel like the first gear I would naturally feel for myself from other cars let me just get through this light and then the third and the fourth gear would feel like a second and then the third would feel like the fifth and then the oh excuse me the uh, Yeah, it, it's, it gets complicated. So once again, the first two gears would be like a first, and the third and the fourth would be like the second, and then the fourth would be like something, fourth and fifth would be something like a fourth gear, and then the sixth would be like fifth. So when I'm at 130, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like I'm missing a gear. So with the engine out of the way, you know, the manual, uh, you know, shift stick is um, not always precise, it's a longer gears, but I just don't like the fact that they shorten the gears and it needs a little bit, uh, you know, getting used to uh, that, but once you get used to it, it's fine. Also, you have a blind spot warning, so this is a really nice package. And... Yeah, steering, the steering is a little bit light. I would say not too light, uh, but it doesn't give you too much feedback. So it's something just like a standard in the middle. And um, the brakes are not too aggressive. Honestly, they're just uh, somewhere in the middle. They do their job. Now, uh, overview in the car is excellent. You're actually sitting quite tall, and if you're a taller person, uh, you can see the hood in front of you, so it gives you a little safety feeling as well. There's a good overview through the mirrors on the side and in the back. Although the back mirror seems like it's a little bit zoomed, <clears throat> and it's uh, lacking, uh, you know, auto dimming feature. But you know, considering the price uh, and everything, I wouldn't expect that. Now, um, you have a you know classical speedometer with the needles, and I like to have the digital speedo there, but uh, you also have a little 
uh, projection telling you where to shift up and shift down so it's like a little coach telling you you know how to get the best fuel consumption out of the car but they didn't type in the gears so I think you know they could have missed that and so let me try to show you here you have this setting here so you have the coolant temperature you have the tire pressure vehicle system is okay uh, odometer so I've passed 280 kilometers so far because this is a brand new car so it hasn't passed a braking period of thousand kilometers so if I show you the uh, average fuel consumption here is 6.8 and I've been driving it a little bit so it's dropping and by WVLTP it's supposed to give you 5.5 in average so unfortunately um, you know I can't give you uh, a real test I just need to drive this car more but I have to you know give it to another journalist uh, tomorrow <clears throat> now um, regarding the interior the seats at first seem comfortable but if you drive a little bit longer uh, just take a little break stretch your legs it gets a little bit um, you know um, pain in the, your bottoms and so on so it does have lumbar for the driver I wish it had a lumbar for the passenger at least on the front as well but it doesn't now overall I have to be honest uh, this is my first Dacia that I'm reviewing on the channel and I'm glad it's a duster because the most famous one I also like to dust the new Logan or the stepway uh, excuse me and uh, honestly uh, when we're being honest I had a big uh, prejudice about Dacia simply because it was known as a cheap brand and I you know thought it was you know not a quality brand but uh, it's true they had some time to improve and this is like the facelift so you have to push it to high revs if you want to speed up a little bit faster but when you're like driving from 50 to 90 it just speeds up nicely so it's not really you don't have to push it that much anyways yeah I was saying you know uh, I was full of prejudices <laughs> regarding Dacia but I'm nicely surprised and you know they had some time and, and this is like the latest generation and it's improved and I am quite happy uh, and I think when you consider today car prices which are crazy expensive and overpriced this is an excellent value for money Star Auto Star Stop works excellent as well so yeah, generally, you know, the Duster isn't a bad car. Uh, now also in the Benz, the car is taller, so it kind of leans, so... But it's better because of all-wheel drive. And what else? Yeah, uh, so sunproof inside uh, is good in city driving to up to 100 kilometers per hour, I would say, but then on 130, since it's an SUV boxy shape, it is a little bit noisy. And then if you go 150, it is quite noisy. So we're gonna get to the highway now. So you're gonna also hear that as well. I'm trying to think if I've missed anything. But no, I don't think I did. Yeah, and suspension. Suspension is, you know, quite comfortable there's some manholes here so it's quite good this was a big one you know 17 inch is for me ideal uh, regarding comfort and looks so go for it you know if you're looking uh, or deciding between 16 and 17 yeah uh, you know it's very soft uh, over you know speed bumps potholes manholes and uneven parts of the road very comfortable drive I would say definitely 
And to be honest, you know, this infotainment seems a little bit basic, but you have all the necessary information and it's, you know, quite decent. And then again, as I've mentioned, you have the uh, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, which is quite nice. I think even in the ad, Dacia was kind of advertising that. Now, you're also gonna see now the LED headlights performance as well. Um, you know, LED projectors, quite decent, good, better than the old halogen lights. It's not matrix, but it's still good. There's a little uphill here, so I need to use lower gear. That is speeds up nicely downhill. So let me catch some speed while going downhill. So you can hear it's quite noisy at 140 and 130. Let me just turn on the cruise control here. You know, it's a little bit noisy for 130 kilometers per hour. So let me just drop it to 100. 120 is okay, 110, now at 100 you can mostly hear tire noise, that's natural for cars, and this is a little rougher tarmac here, so this is 100. And there's slight wind noise coming because this is an SUV type of vehicle, but once you get to you know, 130, it just gets noisy. And you can see up to 130, you can drive in the sixth gear up to two, a little bit higher than the two and a half thousand revolutions. It's getting close to 3000. So if you drive faster than that, it's not really economical. So the best ideal cruising speed would be around 110. And then the car, or excuse me, the engine is not struggling. And it's in low revolutions. So again, this is what I was mentioning with the gears. It feels like it's missing another gear, like a seventh or eighth gear. But you know, usually in manual transmissions, you don't have that. There's an overpass here, so let's slow down. There's some car behind me, so. But I gotta say, overall, Duster is actually a pretty sweet car. Now, it's an SUV, but I would say, you know, this is, you know, great for, you know, city commuting, if you want a taller car, well packed, nothing luxury, nothing, you know, uh, expensive. And it's well packed. Now, one thing I think they should add in the future is definitely uh, regarding safety. So the front radar and a lane assist cameras, that's something this car is missing. And I think they should add that because it's something that's standard now. So it's kind of shocking that this car doesn't have it. You can also see here on the navigation, it gives you the top signs. So that's also very nice. Also, a little note, uh, you know, I'm one of those persons who like to have a bad habit of uh, leaning my hand on the stick shift. And when you're, you know, holding the throttle, you can feel, uh, or excuse me, when, yeah, when you're holding it and you let it go, you can feel that the 
uh, at least in lower gears actually no in the high gears as well the the shift twitches a little bit and when you press acceleration it also twitches so you should not lean your or excuse me rest your hand on the on the stick that's what they always tell you in the auto school so I guess you should stick to that car is nice in the bends now uh, when you have a new engine and it's still in the braking period it is recommended that you keep the car in the higher revs rather than letting it suffocate and struggle in lower excuse me or in higher gears now we also have a speed limiter here so let me just uh, punch in the speed limit Now we do have a tolerance of 10%, uh, excuse me, 10 kilometers up to 100 kilometers per hour. But I know uh, I've passed here to, to yeah, actually a few hours ago. So I know there are cops monitoring. They have the, you know, today and tomorrow, like an action of doing speed uh, controls and so on. And as you can see, people like to speed in Croatia. It's like, you know. Um, but yeah, I can, you know, drive 90 here, but it's good to be on the spot, you know, so there was a police car here earlier, but they've switched to their neighborhood, so they're kind of switching spots every hour or two. So one thing I do love about manual transmissions is you can brake with your engine. I'm personally more like a defensive driver rather than uh, offensive or aggressive. I don't speed from traffic light to traffic light. I just catch on speed and then drive. If I see the traffic light's gonna change, just let go of the gas and let it car coast. So I spend less fuel, brake with my engine, downshifting, and then I uh, use less brakes so the brakes last longer so when you're you know driving at 50 the car easily speeds up you know but just from the start it, sometimes you need to put it to push it to higher revs uh, to catch some speed so that's the reason I would you know advise you to go for the uh, more horsepower version petrol engine in that case, you won't get the uh, uh, four-wheel uh, drive. Unfortunately, it's limited to the diesel only, but I don't think you really need all-wheel drive. And I, if you don't live in a mountain or, I don't know, somewhere uphill that's really steep or going off-road, this, you know, is unnecessary. You're gonna, you, you just, you'll be fine with the front wheel drive or rear wheel drive but all I prefer front wheel drive uh, it's more stable uh, we won't do 0 to 100 because it's like over 10 seconds so it's just like really you know super slow and it's also a new engine that hasn't passed braking period so I won't stress the engine it's not recommended to do that uh, in the first thousand kilometers now um yeah let me just stop here and show you the headlights and this is the long beam so i'm gonna take my iphone now it has a better camera with a better sensor so I'm gonna see how it looks more in person so that is the normal beam and that is the long beam Just to show the brakes a little bit, you know, they're pretty good, not too aggressive. So, navigation, I know some of you will ask me, so I have to show it. Now, navigation is like you drive, like you zoom out where you want to be. Uh, you can punch a direct 
address, but I don't know the address to be honest, so I'll have to use uh, this way. You just punch in here like the pin, and then you say OK, it gives you a route, and that's it. You can see the navigation here has nice colors. After 20 meters, turn left. It has also voice. stops or no now it's just a traffic light in the distance so as you can see the car is suggesting like to shift up so look, you're already in the sixth gear at 70 or 80 kilometer prepare to keep right after 800 meters now I can also mute this navigation so it's less annoying So it is time to, you know, summon up my impressions and my feelings uh, of the duster. Yeah, not too shabby, you know. I like where they're going with the design. They're increasing the quality, but when we're talking about that, uh, Dacia has gave official announcement that uh, in 2025, 26, something like that, they will, uh, you know. Uh, stop selling uh, you know budget cars and they will increase their prices I assume they will um, you know um, uh, pack their cars more better and give them more value but they will definitely not be uh, a budget brand they're gonna step away from that this is a natural step for the development also don't worry for that 40 speed limit there's like constructions here but they're not really active so that's the reason for that. I should have just think, lowered it because here was some construction, but it's not on the road. So yeah, maybe lower the gear down. My feeling, although the car is not suggesting it immediately. So let me just see here the fuel consumption has it dropped we almost did a 300 kilometers there there's another speed our another police stop there with the radar so we just passed 300 kilometers and it says range 470 so 6.4 liters now excuse me that was the current consumption we just changed my lane here so average 6.8, so it hasn't dropped significantly. But again, I think you need to just keep driving and you're gonna get to those, um, you know, VLTP, excuse me, WVLTP figures. But, you know, judging by, uh, you know, I've, I've passed 300 kilometers, I've maybe spent one, two out of four here, at least first half. So, you know, you can do 600, almost 900 kilometers or more. I mean, I think, you know, this car is spending little fuel. It's like a lighter, to be honest, at least judging by the range I've passed and the computer saying me how uh, much more fuel I got. So, unfortunately, again, a new car, I can't exactly do that test. controls while moving the steering wheel obviously yeah uh, let me just lower the window so you have to press it deep so it's fully automatic nice feature you can hear the diesel now it sounds like a diesel nice purring sound I just garage is in power saving mode after I think it's like past 11 o'clock at night this is where we end our video I'm just gonna show you maybe in the garage 
also how the car looks at uh, more lights perhaps and I might park here and first gear is up uh, in Croatia we have like mandatory you need to turn your hazards when backing up in a parking space so actually I'm gonna pick the second one close to the column now the camera is pretty good but always watch your mirrors it's the safest thing to do So there you go, you can see the front camera, there's little markers as well as the back camera, you can see your sides, you're good, you can play with the contrast here, so I'm not really sure if the GoPro is picking this good or not. So that was it, uh, I hope you liked this review, I hope it was informative, and uh, if you like it, subscribe to the channel. Click the bell to get notified when I upload more videos. Um, share this video with someone uh, if they're also interested in the car. Don't forget your valuables in the car and stay safe. Hope I'm going to see you in the next uh, video. And just to show you the car a little bit from the outside. It's looking very nice. Especially with this new redesigned logo. So, locks automatically. Once again, but let me just uh, unlock it for you so you can see those headlights. That's how they look. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.